Welcome to another Unwinding with Fiber and Fabric. It's been a couple weeks since I did my last video. We had a little bit of crazy time here, but I have been looking forward to getting back to my spinning and preparing fibers, especially since Torta Fleece is not all that far off now, and I like to go into it with a lot of prepared fibers ready to spin. During this time um, that I've been away from doing videos, I've been focused on managing the um, remodel of the two final rooms in our house. When we moved into this house three years ago, it was, for the most part, in its, its same state as it had been when it was built in 1962. And it included an old heating unit that was leaking and no longer effective, or efficient, I should say. Unfortunately, once you've moved in, you kind of have a lot of stuff in the way. So we were able to do the other rooms of the house, but these two bedrooms, we weren't able to pull out the baseboard um, units for that heating system. And they just, you know, so the bedrooms just became a little bit of a collecting of space and some storage. But with some creative work and effort, we've now turned them into very usable spaces. One of them is going to be a craft room and office. Um, it's a place that I can't wait to try out working with um, different types of polymers and um, I want to make um, resin buttons. <laughs> so I'm sure there will be a video on that sometime soon. But for now I want to deal with fiber and a number of years ago my husband built me this, um, put together this, constructed this hackle. And a hackle is something you've got um, combs, fiber combs. He would made me these and he made me this hackle and I'll show a picture of it here. Um, and I had to make it because it was a little, at that point I didn't have a blending board. And we made this so that I could blend some fibers that I had prepared so it had hand dyed and different things. And I wanted to be able to blend them and um, I didn't want to do them on the drum carter. So he built this for me. It is terribly dangerous for me. The other day I was using it um, and I actually made myself bleed quite a bit. But I do like it for using uh, fibers that are um, unprocessed so it is the the original purpose and the main use of a hackle is to work with um, long longer wool this is some lester long wool that I have and the the hackle um, is is really wonderful to use with I'm gonna scoot back just a tiny bit to use with the comb and this fiber is so wonderful it doesn't you know I can if I pull it that way basically to make a combed um, top there we go and if you see I now have a beautiful top that I could spin. This fiber is so fabulous. I seldom ever prep it. I just spin with it. But if I wanted to have a nicer prep and really have it um, nice and clean and ready to go, that's the use of a hackle. I will put the disclaimer here. I don't use it very often. I am not the most excellent resource on hackles. I would recommend finding some other YouTube videos, some other websites, if you are wanting to use a hackle and understand what it does. For this video, what I use it for is to just blend fibers. And one of the things that I discovered, even after I got the blending board, is that my blending board, by the way, I keep my fiber, let's see if I can put this on camera. I keep my fiber in five gallon buckets. My, um, I keep, I should say, my, my fleeces in five gallon buckets. So that's why I have that lid there. I wash them, put them in the five gallon buckets. They, the buckets can hold two to three pounds of a 
nice, soft, lightweight, fine micron fiber. Um, so it's a great way of, sto uh, of storing your fiber. These lids snap on really well. They hold everything in, hold everything out. They stack well, they're waterproof, and that's been my fleece storage for a long time. They're a lot less expensive, um, usually, than, uh, than bins. And I can write on them with crayon marker, or crayon, um, wax crayons to label them. So if you're looking for an easy, um, cost-effective way to store your fleece, that's, that's what I do. I tend to put, um, take, uh, uh, the unclean fleece, I'll put, keep it in its, um, usually they come in, in garbage bags, um, trash bags. I'll put the whole thing in, put whatever part fits it, label it, seal it when I wash it, goes back in. Um, it, it works really well. So back to the, to the processing of the fiber. As I was saying, so I have a blending board, but one of the things I discovered is when I'm using my blending board, using unprocessed fiber, so there's the lock right there, okay? Using unprocessed fiber, just from the lock, I have a tendency to, to have more difficulty using the blending board with this and getting it to work as opposed to this. Uh, n certainly I can go to the drum carter, but I find that I like to use my blending board when it's a prepared fiber, um, a roving, something of that s sort. And I, I do like to use the hackle when it comes to blending fiber that is still in its, you know, lock formation, not carded, not in a roving. This still has some seeds in it. And so I'm just putting the fiber onto the hackle. And again, find some videos that talk about using the hackle. Is it preferable to have the cut end or the tips go on first? All of that, um, that information is out there. But the thing I like about it, as I said, is if I put the unprocessed fiber on it, so it's clean, but no carding, no combing, and I take some other fiber, and this is, um, this is a nylon, a dyed nylon, okay? And so I'm putting that fiber on. I've also got some um, acrylic, the, 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 yarn, uh, the skeins of um, unspun yarns that you can get from some of the craft stores. And I just layer these on. I find that when I am putting these silky fibers on, I kind of press down and I'll have a video I'm sure going here because I have the other camera going. But I try to press down to keep it on because this, the very thin fibers just go right through. And so I put that down, ah, being attacked. And oh yeah, I have some, I have some alpaca that I had carded that I'm putting down. And so this is really fine. All of these fibers are just extremely fine micron. I'm not quite sure. It, I'm usually really good about making sure I know what the breed of sheep is when I write it on my bucket. For some reason, this bucket has the name of the sheep, but it does not have, um, it does not have the breed and when I bought it. But it is extraordinarily, extraordinarily fine micron, um, about a medium length. So I'm going to think it's something like um, some of the Coriadales out there. Um, it might be something like a CVM, but I usually know where those all came from. So it's just extremely, extremely fine micron. All of it's very soft. and so. If I took this to the blending board and I tried to do on the blending board, I find that it gets, it doesn't open up enough because it hasn't been, it hasn't been carded. It hasn't been combed. It hasn't been put into a roving or a top. So bringing it to the hackle, I can come in with this very dangerous 
comb and I can start to pull off. Now, the thing that I find with this though, and I'm sure that hackle people are saying, oh, you must be doing it wrong, but I need to go slowly. It tends to get a lot of the wool really evenly, but the other fibers, it sometimes doesn't want to grab onto them as much. So I, I, have, I, I fiddle with it just a little bit, okay? But now what I have on here, all of the fibers are going in this, their, their same direction. That's the thing with a combed fiber. I could spin it right off of this comb, but I want to take a little bit more of the fiber that's stuck on here. And this fiber would be considered, um, this would be considered kind of like seconds as, as far as spinning. I could take this over to the carder and I could card it together if I wanted to. And I could just spin right off of that and I would get a blend. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back onto the hackle one more time, being very careful not to make myself bleed on those very sharp tips. And I'm going to put this stuff back on it one more time. I'm going to even take some of this waste. And I should clarify, it wouldn't be considered seconds. Seconds are when it's getting the, when the animal's being sheared, um, it's the less quality. Um, this would just be the waste fiber. You can tell. It's been a couple weeks since I've done this. It's been a couple weeks since I've thought of anything um, <laughs> specifically. I haven't been, haven't been communicating very well. One of the things that happened during this construction time is I ended up getting um, the COVID shot. And I did, I got the one shot deal. And I did fairly well with it. It did um, affect me. I had a little bit of a side effect. But it itself wasn't so bad. But as with most cases when I get shots, I went into a terrible fibromyalgia flare-up and I have been pretty useless other than supervising uh, for the last couple weeks. Um, so this is the first time I've tried to really be human <laughs> in a couple weeks, um, first public appearance in a couple weeks. So bear with me <laughs> as I ramble. So I've got the fiber back on here one more time. And there's two things. I can use the comb at this point and try to comb it out. But one of the things I find once I have it on the second time is instead of combing it off, I'm just going to start to pull it off. And some people use what they call a diz, um, which is basically a tool that has a hole in it that you pull the fiber through. For me, I think it probably has a lot to do with my dexterity, um, the way my brain works. But for me, I find the easy thing to do at this point is to just very slowly and very controlled pull the fiber past the tines of the hackle. It's going to leave some waste on it, but when I'm done, I have this nicely blended fiber that I can take over to the spinning wheel and I can spin. So why is this preferable to the blending board? Well for me as I said it's preferable because I can use my unprocessed fleece very easily. Um, it's uber soft. Oh my goodness. It's so so soft. And the spin that I had and doing this the other day, it has turned out wonderfully soft. So I put the nylon and the acrylic with it because I've been thinking about making a pair of socks that I wanted lots of color and I wanted a soft wool as opposed to one of the longer wools that would be more durable. But I wanted some durable fiber in it. Um, I wanted to play with a little bit of color. This is next to skin soft. Even with that acrylic, even with the nylon in it, it is next to skin soft. It, it's not really a true worsted, um, and it's not a full woolen, but it is a beautiful fiber. So 
if you have access to a hackle or a grinder and some wood tools, you can make one. My husband made this with um, steel bars that he picked up at um, a home improvement store and he had a grinder and he grind, ground down all the tips and he set them into the boards. He did the same thing with um, the combs and did it save us some money? Well, a little. When it comes to the combs, I don't know if it really saved us money, but he created a handle that my hand can hold. He created a smaller comb than what you'd end up buying. And so for me, having the smaller tools, having um, a handle that, that fits my hand um, without strain, those are important to me. So that's part of the reason he made it. If you can afford to buy one, there's they, you know there, there are companies that make them. It's a nice tool to have. And I think, even though this Lester Longwool is seriously right off the lock, ready to spin, I actually may take some time here getting ready for Tour de Fleece and I may actually go ahead and comb using the hackle, comb up some, um, some of this to try to spin. Something tells me that if I did that I would be able to get um, a very different fiber than what I have been currently spinning right from the lock. So. That is my return to video making and um, oh there was something I wanted to show and I do have a photo that I'll put here of um, before I cut open the steak. But I'm in the process because as I said I wasn't feeling very well so I don't know how well this is going to show up on the camera. Hold on, let me get rid of the big ball of yarn. Um, but I cut the steak and it's an itty bitty little sweater that I'm in the process of doing a button band for. Because I had <laughs> I had the orphan skein uh, the orphan skeins of yarn, the orphan hanks of yarn. <laughs> I wasn't feeling that very well. I've been quilting, um, but I wanted something a little bit different. So of course, what do I do? I make a baby sweater. <laughs> I will put a link in um, in the description below of that pattern. It is a pattern, um, I believe it's Tin Can Knits. I will, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I have been making top down raglan sweaters now for years, but I, I've always struggled to figure out, okay, how do you know how to make it, how do you know the size to make it for babies, for, for children? And um, one of the other um, vloggers that I was watching, she she talked about this sweater. I went and looked and I was so excited because this pattern it gave all the measurements of the components of the sweater. Not just oh knit this many rows or do this. No, it gave a whole chart of the measurements of from arm to wrist and from neck down. All of the different measurements for the different sizes. And that's what I needed because again, I've been doing the top down raglan for a long time. Uh, but knowing the measurements of the person you're making it for uh, is, is vital. And since I'm making this this sweater for a grandchild who isn't even in the thought of, of creation yet, um, I needed to have some basic measurements. So I'm going to put a link to this pattern below. I, I really loved the, um, the different patterns I found uh, with, with her, um, her site. The link I'm going to be sharing, I think, is a Ravelry link, but and I have a kitty here that's meowing. It might be coming up um, on the. What? I'm almost done with the video. Why are you meowing at me? Sorry. I would. Uh, here we go. <laughs> we have a cat. <laughs> so, uh, as I said, I really like the patterns that they have. I I um, do recommend them, but to find a pattern that had all of the charts, that was truly wonderful for me. So I hope you've enjoyed this crazy <laughs> video. I will be coming back with more, I'm sure, fiber um, videos in the next weeks and I should have some quilts finished. I just have some binding to put on a couple of them. So I hope you've enjoyed this unwinding with fiber and fabric as crazy as it is and I wish you a wonderful day and 
happy spinning, quilting, knitting, whatever it is you choose to do to unwind. I hope you have joy as you do it. We'll see you soon. Yes, we'll see you soon. <laughs>